Okay, so previously we proved this following proposition that if the GCD of A and N is one, then the order of A to the K is the order of A divided by the GCD of K and the order of A. So there's a super important corollary to this proposition that allows us to know exactly the number of primitive roots uh, modulo N, and that is as follows. So if there is a primitive root modulo n, so remember we're not guaranteed to have one, but if we have one, then there are exactly phi of phi of n primitive roots modulo n. Okay, so uh, let's look at this proof. So what we'll do is we'll let r be a primitive root modulo n. So what that tells us is that the order of r is equal to phi to the n, phi of n. Okay, great. And then the next thing that we notice is that any other any other primitive root is from the following set. So then any other primitive root is from this following set. So I'll write it down and then we'll look at it. So this is one r, r squared, up to r to the phi of n minus one. Okay, great. So if we recall, this set is another way of writing the group of units modulo n. In other words, this represents every number that is relatively prime to n. So, and by that I mean every unique residue that is relatively prime to n. Okay, um, good. And from this we can say that uh, any other primitive root is of this form. So any other primitive root is of the form r to the k with um, 0 less than or equal to k uh, less than phi to the n. And notice I can't have 0, even though that's in this set, I can erase that because that gives me 1, which is obviously not a primitive root. Okay, good. And now let's calculate the order of r to the k. So we have the order modulo n of r to the k equals the order of r divided by the GCD of k with the order of r. But because r is a primitive root, we know some of these numbers. So this is phi of n divided by the GCD of k with phi of n. Great. So our goal is to find out when r to the kth power is a primitive root. So that means r to the kth power is a primitive root exactly when this is equal to 1, sorry, is equal to phi of n, because we want the order of r to the k equal phi to the n, or phi of n. So what that will tell us is that the GCD of k and phi of n must be equal to 1. But then from this list, 1 to phi of n minus 1, there are exactly phi of phi of n such numbers. So there are exactly phi of phi of n such, such numbers. Okay, great. So um, I'll clean this up and we'll look at a simple example and in a, a preceding video we'll look at a more complicated example. Okay, so in this example, uh, based on this corollary that we just proved, we want to find all the primitive roots for n equals 7. So let's show that there is a primitive root first, and we can check that by, um, so in a previous video we saw that 2 is not a primitive root, and we can see that that's because 2 cubed is 8, which is 7, so the order of 2 is 3, but we're looking for something with the order of 6. 
So since two doesn't work, we'll look at three. So we have three to the one is three. Three uh, squared is equal to nine, which is equal to two. Oh, and I should point out that the possible orders um, are one, two, three, and six. And that's because we need all divisors of uh, six. Okay, great. And then three cubed is equal to uh, three times three squared. So that's three times two, which is six. Great, but no, notice that six is equal to negative one, so that's not equal to one. Uh, and then the next thing to notice is we don't have to go any further. We showed the order can't be one, two, or three. The order will be six. And we know that uh, 3 to the 6th is 1 mod 7 by Euler's generalization of Fermat's little theorem. So in other words, we have the order of 3 is equal to 6. And that means 3 is a primitive root mod 7. So now that we know we have a primitive root, let's figure out how many primitive roots there are. So there are phi of phi of 7, which equals phi of 6, which equals <coughs> two primitive roots. Great. And from the proof of uh, the number of primitive roots, we actually know their form. So they are 3 to the k, where uh, the GCD of k with 6 equals 1. And here I'll point this out to make this more general. This is phi of 7 or phi of n. Great. So we want to look for everything that's relatively prime to 6 that is smaller than 6. So we only get 1 and 5. So that means they are 3 to the 1st and 3 to the 5th. So those are all of our primitive roots. And then you can check that 3 to the 5th is congruent to 5 mod 7. So that means our primitive roots are 3 and 5 mod 7. Okay, so that's the end of this video. We'll look at a, a bigger example in the next video.